Uh, well, I'm Karen Ward. Um, I'm living in Vancouver right now. I'm 37. Um, I'm an artist and a writer and a ex-historian. Um, <laughs> I live with a mental illness and uh, it keeps me pretty busy. Um, I live on on provincial disability here in BC and I spend a lot of my time volunteering and making art. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a collective member at the Gallery Gachet, um, which is an artist-run centre in, in the downtown east side of Vancouver. We have a large back area, which is, we've got a wood shop, um, a kiln, we have our computer salon, um, where we have image editing, image creation, publishing programs, video editing programs. We've got the, t you know, we've got these tools that uh, um, are necessary. We run officially as a collective. We have a meeting. We have one meeting a month. It's this amorphous thing, and we are we are its we are its members. But it is a composition of all of the, all of us as individuals, as well as the history behind us as the gallery. We're unique in the country. We're an artist-run center by and for people with mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. Gachet was Van Gogh's uh, last doctor. He was a naturopath uh, and psychiatrist. Um, Gachet was his, was his fr friend in his last years, which were clouded by bipolar depression. Our gallery is themed around mental illness, and trauma, and abuse, and, uh, and work that speaks to those issues. Uh, let's say, we don't say that every artist who must who shows must have some sort of mental illness. We're not like prescriptive like that. That's, it's important to us that people have lived experience with mental illness or you know, understanding paranoia, for example, or understanding the feeling of being an outsider. An outs outsider sounds simple, but it's I mean feeling like you've been kicked out of society. I mean, for me, coming, uh, coming out of my um, experience to date, in, in a lot of ways, as living with a mental illness, it's very empowering to be able to make decisions and take responsibility. And because, you know, so much of the process of being mentally ill in this society is disempowering and takes away your decision making. It's made a huge positive difference in my life. It's very gratifying to see uh, images you make, pictures you make, uh, words you write out in the public. We had a show in uh, February. It was a man who never actually stepped foot in his art, any art gallery in his entire life. And he produced these amazing paintings with stuff he bought at the dollar store. And they were like this intense visionary art on cardboard that he'd found in the dumpster. And it just, you're just like, that's so amazing. You can't even, you know, you can't, part of you doesn't want to tell the rest of the world about it. We have a few set shows, such as the Mad Pride. We do that every year, and we'll continue doing it every year. The concept of Mad Pride is about the radical acceptance of difference. And the, the so we, it, and beyond the acceptance is the idea that there's more diversity of ideas and thoughts and opinions than, than one is led, led on. We also have a uh, program called Out of the Rain, and it's a six-month mentoring program um, with street-level artists. And the goal is to work with them to create um, a more stable living environment artistic sp and artistic space and access to the arts, which, which means, you know, um, anything from paint to, uh, you know, canvas and supplies and traditional material as well, or, you know, if need be, one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the computer or t training with a camera or what have you. Um, so this program runs for six months. The first four months is all art, or the first five months is all art making and working and uh, inter inter interacting with an occupational therapist. Um, and the last month is the show. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, they sh and, the, and the artists get a chance to have a group show that they work on them, the details of themselves. Mm -hmm. And they, they can uh, sell their work, sell prints, sell all kinds of stuff. And it's been, we've been doing that for a number of years, and it's a really, really awesome program. We don't like to have events that are expensive. Mm -hmm. um, like, the idea of charging admission for a show is just, like, no way. Would we ever do that? 
we try to have events that are accessible to the community in uh, like in a unique way, like with, for example, film screenings. We don't have a theater in the downtown east side. People don't generally feel comfortable going to Tinseltown. So we have like a free film night once a month at least, nice. right? Yeah. And it's just, you know, people for come in, oh, it's Tuesday, oh, cool, right? And then, you know, bring popcorn, that's a little yeah. potlucky atmosphere, you know? It's, or we'll have an open mic and we'll have people, like, it'll be neighborhood folks mostly and it'll be really cool. Because like, mm -hmm. you can really, I mean, you really start, you really appreciate the creativity mm -hmm. inherent in the neighborhood, which, you know, and part of that, part of that creativity is, is it's about how much people really interact with each other. So many of our shows are community driven and that's a part of art that is really unique um, because we, so much of contemporary art is all about personality and kind of a culture of celebrity. Um, and instead we're doing art with like, you know, big groups of 70 people in, in the downtown east side community, right? And uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's really, really unique and interesting. And I mean, then we bring in, these, bring in these folks from the neighborhood, start coming in more and more, and then we say, hey, do you want to volunteer more regularly? And then they volunteer regularly, and then it's like, hey, do you want to be a collective member? Would you be interested? And they think about it for a few weeks, and they say, actually, mm, mm, you know, I, thought, I think I'm ready for that. And, and that's how we grow and change. Whether you're poor or rich or ill or, you know, you desire companionship. I mean, I remember reading a study in a journal. It was about, you know, research indicates that, you know, people with schizophrenia enjoy having friends. And I was like... <laughs> Oh my goodness, I wonder what kind of shirt grant they got for that. Like, People need community, part of the recovery model. It doesn't happen in an office, it happens in the social world. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the problem with the medical, medical model is, well, you know, the doctor-patient relationship and, and it's, you know, the pathologizing nature of what they do. Um, and the whole concept of getting well, taking your pills and trying to, you know, rehabilitate, re re get, you know, back into things, as it were. I mean, you, it takes a it takes a community. I think people who are are working and trying to fulfill something and are passionately connected to what they're doing every day are. You know, they are not, in fact, terribly ill. They're doing really well. And a lot of people would be really jealous of the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm.